welcome to A Cloud of Witnesses and the Secrets of Their Power. My name is Robert Pears, and in this episode, I'm going to look at the ministry of William Branham. For those of you who don't know who he was, he was the initiator of the great healing revival of the late 1940s, early 1950s. He was a man that saw incredible miracles in his ministry. People like Gordon Lindsay, who was, of course, the founder of Christ for the Nations, spoke of this man and, and of the miracles that you would not have ever believed if there were not countless proofs and testimonies backing them. I've even gone and found newspaper articles where people shared their testimonies. I've found books of people sharing their testimonies of how they were miraculously, powerfully, and instantly healed in this man's ministry. He truly walked with incredible power, and he was considered one of the two great um, leaders of that revival, the healing revival, him and Oral Roberts. He was considered the pace setter, and he would be launched into global ministry from obscurity, or I should say, being a person that was a per man operating this little small tabernacle in Indiana. And so I think it gives a message of hope that you could be in the middle of nowhere and be a nobody and all of a sudden God can just open a door and launch you into something so powerful and credible that can change and impact the nations. Now I want to start off by saying very clearly the seeker of the power is always the Holy Spirit. It's the anointing of God on your life. But what we've got to learn is how do we flow with that anointing? How do we allow the Holy Spirit to come in and move through us and minister to the people? You remember the one case where the disciples could not get this young little boy delivered from a demonic spirit. And they said, Jesus, what, what happened? Why would it work? And Jesus said, this one comes out through prayer and fasting. So the things we've got to learn if we're going to flow and, and move uh, mightily in the Spirit. So when I look at the secrets, what I'm going to share with you is things that we can learn from William Branham to enable us to be catapulted into our divine purpose and serve this generation. I want to say something really quick. That at the beginning of the 20th century, of course, we saw many revivals, the Welsh, the Azusa, and then a whole flurry of revivals globally as Pentecostalism was launched into the nations. Then there came the 30s, and there was a lull, and it went right into the 40s because of the Depression and the war. Many of the leaders of that early revival, of course, had been promoted to heaven in the mid-40s. And so the body of Christ had come to a point where it began to become desperate again for a move of God. There was a man called Franklin Hall who wrote a great book on the atomic power with God through prayer and fasting. And people began to pray and fast and seek heaven and cry out for a fresh move of God. A desperation came upon the people. And there's never been a revival that's not birthed without prayer and fasting and a holy desperation for God to move once again. God is always desiring to move, and I believe we're in another time period where we've seen the leaders of the previous revival promote to heaven, and we've seen a lull in many places where we're not seeing the power flow as it should. And so it's time for a fresh outpouring from heaven, and we need to pray and fast. And I also believe that we can learn from these previous heroes of faith, what they did right, what they did wrong, so that we can be catapulted. Why reinvent the wheel? Rather, I'd rather be catapulted into my divine purpose quickly. So when I look at William Branham, I want to point at things that really helped him and share some things that became um, the weaknesses that he needed to deal with. And the first thing I've already talked about is holy desperation. And William Branham had to come to a place of holy desperation. Throughout his life, he kept hearing these sounds, these winds. He saw this light. He would hear this, this um, voice, uh, walk pure, do not walk, do not smoke or drink, etc. And he, he, he didn't understand it. He's having these visions. And so finally he comes to this one point in his life where he's come home from work. He hears the sound again and it terrifies him. And he tells his wife, I'm going to go find out what this is. I'm going to go seek the Lord and find out once and for all what this is all about. So he comes and he, he, he spends time in prayer. He just locks himself away and he prays fervently. And remember the word says that the Lord is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And so if you will diligently or earnestly seek after, pursue him, he will meet with you. You will have your divine appointment and a door will be opened. Knock and keep knocking. The Bible says, cry out to me. And we see in the Gospels that many people had to cry out, but there was the noise of the crowd and they had to keep crying out and crying out until Jesus 
turned back and said, what do you want? So William Brownham gets his answer at 11 p.m. Um, and night, May 7th, I believe, 1946, when this angel turns up and says, I've got a message from the presence of the Lord. And he starts to share certain things with them, and he backs it up with the word. Because your, your ministry, your life, is not built upon your spiritual experiences, except, of course, being born again. Um, your life is built upon hearing and doing the word of God. Everything must line up. Line upon line, precept upon precept with the Word of God, and you've got to hear it. It's not your opinion of it. It's not theologians' opinion of it. It's what the Holy Ghost is saying about the Word of God. And so the angel shares certain things to him. And one of the things, of course, was the word purity. Throughout his life, he's been told, do not drink, do not smoke. And this is so important as we look at this, the number two thing here. You need to come to a place of consecration. Are you sold out, dedicated to the Lord? Why are you trying to do what you're doing? Why do you want to walk with greater anointing? Why do you want to see greater power manifest in your life? Why do you want to see the healing ministry? Is it because you want to be launched to a big ministry? You want to do certain big things so people look at you? Or is it because of the burden of heaven? Has the heartbeat of heaven got in you? Are you um, just so, it's deep inside of you that, God, I see souls, I see the church, and there's something in me, God, that I want to flow and be used by you. The word says in Psalm 110 that in the day of his power that his people will volunteer freely. So, God, I come and I yield freely. I'm consecrated. I separate myself from the world. Because right now you look at the church and it's hard to determine, are they really the church or is it the world? And you need to be separate, come out from her, and you are consecrated and dedicated to the Lord and for the purpose of heaven. And you're there to do it because you want to be a blessing to the body of Christ, a blessing to this generation that they may see Jesus and see that He is the Lord, He is the Lord healer, and He is the God who delivered them. Now, the next thing I want to point out is that you cannot do it in and of yourself. William Branham after he has this visitation, and I'll come back to that, goes and tells his, his church. And they actually believe him. And after he shares with them, he all of a sudden he gets an invite to come pray for this young lady um, that was the daughter of a Reverend Doherty, who is in St. Louis. And this woman, is, this daughter is demonically possessed and very ill, and they can do nothing about it. They've been praying, and medical doctors have given up in her. And so they go, he goes and he turns up and they pray, pray for hours and nothing. They go away somewhere, they pray more and nothing. And finally, William Branham separates himself and goes and seeks the Lord. And this is so critical that you learn to go seek the Lord. You don't, you cannot flow and operate unless you've spent time in prayer and getting hold of heaven and pulling on heaven, pulling on that anointing so that it flows in and through you so that you've got life. You've got the words of their spirit and life in you. And there's a sharpness and there's a power to what you're saying that can reach the generation. And so William Brandon goes because you need to hear what heaven has to say. Not what you're seeing, not what you're feeling, but what is heaven saying about it? Because you need to apply faith to what heaven's saying. Heaven will back up heaven's opinion. And so he goes and prays, and, and the Lord shares an incredible revelation I want you to get hold of. That you cannot do it of yourself. Jesus said that in and of himself he could not do it, but what he saw the Father doing he did. And William Brown and suddenly realized, we're trying to make it happen, and you can't. You are just the vessel. You are just the vessel. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. You're just the vessel. And that you need to have a sensitivity to see. Have your eyes open to see. That takes time of pressing in and spending time in prayer to see. And William Brandon wouldn't begin any campaign without praying and fasting before. He would not go to a meeting and be disrupted, um, have an interview with somebody. No, he had to spend time with the Lord so that he was consecrated. His mind, his heart was locked into the Lord so that he could flow with the Holy Spirit before he ministered. The next part I wanted you to get hold of is that it's the word receiving. The angel told him that they were to, one of the things he was to learn was to the receiving message. And I, well, let me explain this to you, because there's two sides. 
First of all, if you ever watch a video of William Brown preaching or you read some of his stories, you will see that the first thing he does is he introduces you to Jesus. Jesus is the healer. It's not you. It's not about you. You've got to get the eyes of the people off of their sickness, their disease, off of you and onto Jesus. And when they come into the prayer line, he would spend time and say, do you receive Jesus as your healer now? Because remember in the um, Gospels, Jesus came to his hometown and the people did not receive him. And it said that because of their unbelief, God could do no mighty work. God was hindered because of their unbelief. What was their unbelief? They didn't receive him. They could not receive him because, no, he is the son of Mary and Joseph. They put him in a box and they could not. And, and as the angel explained, one of the greatest difficulties men have is receiving God moving in flesh human flesh. And so you've got to, first of all, get people's attention on Jesus and receive him as the healer. And then the second thing William Brown would do is, do you receive me as the instrument? Because there's got to be a point of contact and God puts gifts into human vessels, earthen vessels. He uses earthen vessels most of the time. And he said, do you receive me as that instrument? I'm just the instrument. I'm just the gift. I am not the healer. And it was very clear. It's even in the newspapers where they would call him a faith healer. And he said, I'm not the healer. Jesus is. And they would even share how he would state to them, do you receive Jesus as the healer? So you've got to get people's eyes off of you. But at the same time, they've got to receive you. Because the word says, if you receive a prophet, in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. So we got to be able to receive the gift, but recognize and receive Jesus as the healer. The other thing that I want to get at here is he was told to be reverent and humble. Two powerful things here. Let me start with humility. There is something powerful when people came and they saw William Branham about his humility. It enabled them to connect with him. They trusted him because there's power and humility. Jesus humbled himself. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due season he will exalt you. Our call is to humble ourselves. It's not about you. It's not about you sharing how big and how great you are. It's about being the servant. It's about loving. It's about putting that other person, making them more important than you. The purpose of heaven's greater. The people are greater than you. Think about Jesus. He laid his life down completely. He did, it was nothing in of himself. The desire, can you imagine? I'm sure at times he wanted to do things. His flesh wanted to do things, but he put you and I first and over his natural desires and wants. Humility. And we see that there had to be a balance to it that he was such a desiring man to please and take care of the people that the lines, the crowds that were coming to be healed with were going forever. We go into the wee hours of the morning praying over people. Until finally, in 1947, he would have a nervous breakdown out of exhaustion. He had lost 40 pounds in weight and just constantly ministering to the people. They had to put a time limit on it. And so there has to be a, a humility. But there has to, of course, be a balance to it because you got to take care of this human vessel. In the other words, with reverence. And the word reverence brings with it honor. That you give honor to heaven first. And you give honor to the right people. The Bible said that we're to give honor to those that labor in the gospel. We're to give them double honor, not triple honor, not worship, not put them on a pedestal, but we're to give them honor. And that honor thing is so important because you need to have spiritual fathers. You need people that can speak into your life. And you have people that you can share with. William Brown, of course, in his later years would derail and he would go off into his own doctrine yet several leaders would try to come to him and talk to him and he would not listen there wasn't that honor and i'm not saying at times we got to lock into the things of heaven but when you got people that you know that you trust honor and that humility that the angel warned him about in his latter years 
He went into pride. Remember the Bible says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And God wants you to learn to walk humbly and walk in an honor. The next thing is simplicity. William Brandon was not a highly educated man. If you read his messages or you hear him, his English is terrible, much like mine. But he brought a simplistic message. Only believe, just like Smith Wigglesworth, just believe. And he would share, the, look, he would pray over them and said, do you believe and act like a show it, demonstrate it. Do as you believe. You know, there, there had to be a simple belief in receiving. It wasn't complex. And sometimes when the church gets organized, we organize the Holy Spirit out. We've got to get back to the simplicity of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to be Lord in the ministry and Lord in the service, and Lord of our lives. Let the Holy Spirit have full access and do what He desires to do. As simplicity. We make it so complex, yet it's so simple. If you watch William Brown in ministry, a lot of time he said a simple prayer wasn't complex, but the Lord worked. I want that simplicity in my life. We often said make it too complex, so let's learn a simplicity of the Word. Just of the Word says it, let's do it according to what the Word says. Another thing he had was sensitivity. This is so important, a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. When he went to South Africa, uh, William, or sorry, F.F. F. Bosworth went with him. And Bosworth, of course, was one of the great leaders of the healing revivals of the early uh, 20th century. And he joined the team. And, of course, he brought a lot of experience and understanding of the healing ministry. William Branham did not, he was not a theologian. He was not a well-educated man. He didn't know the Word. And God had brought into his life key people like Gordon Lindsay and Bosworth to help him. Uh, of course, Lindsay was the more educated in terms of really having the depths of the gospel. And I think that William Brandon, when he shut the door to people like Lindsay, he shut the door to people that he needed. And we need to understand you need the body of Christ. We need each other. So in South Africa, Bosworth would record he'd never seen a man more sensitive to the Holy Spirit yielding to, flowing to, and that comes out of time spent in prayer. That comes by coming ready and prepared before the service so that there's a flow. And when the Holy Spirit moves over there, you move there. When the Holy Spirit moves over there, you go with Him. You yield and flow with the Holy Ghost because you let that, the Holy Spirit has already said, be Lord. And when He's Lord, He will confirm the Word with signs and wonders following. And finally, truth. William Branham said this all the time. He said, if I tell you the truth, the Lord will back it and the Lord will confirm the word. If I tell the truth, how many ministries today tell the truth? They tell what people want to hear or something that's highly researched. Just tell the truth. Just say the truth. Because Jesus came and he was the truth. And we have the spirit of truth. And if the Holy Spirit's going to move, He's the Spirit of truth. You cannot play games in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You cannot play games and expect the power of the living God. You must be a person of, a, of the truth and a flowing and a sensitivity to the Holy Ghost. And I always want to finish. I'm going to add in the point real quick. That William Branham in his early days was a man of unity. He did not declare, he, he said, he didn't belong to any denomination so that he could operate in any denomination. And he desired in the spirit of love to see the brethren come together to see the gifts flow. And you're going to see that in every revival, God brought unity. And Jesus prayed, of course, in his prayer after the Last Supper in John for unity, that we would come to unity. Now, I don't believe in um, unity based on wrong doctrine but there's somehow God's going to bring us to unity. And that William Branham in his early days believed in a unity, stopped fighting over doctrine, but receiving as a brother. We can disagree in doctrine, but how are we going to influence and change people of a different doctrine if they don't have access to us and if they're not seeing the fruit? We're to judge things based on the fruit and does it line up with the word? We separate ourselves onto ourselves and we separate as groups, as churches, instead of connecting and working together. 
and realizing that there's a power and true unity of the faith and unity of the spirit. So I pray as you listen to the certain things that he did, I encourage you to check out his documentary I'm going to do as well, that it would provoke you, challenge you, stretch you, that you're going to go after God and get a greater hunger. And I pray right now the gift be stirred up on the inside of you, that a fire fall and the anointing of the Holy Ghost just hit you hard. Today be the day of your visitation. Get the desperation today. Get that hunger for God. I want to say this very quickly, that your effectiveness in ministry is based on your time spent in throne ministry. The more throne ministry you do, the more effective you will be in ministering to people. So spend time ministering before the throne. Spend time in love and worship of the Lord God. Spend time in His presence. Love His presence. Grab hold of His presence. I mean, I want you to walk and think about it. I want you to sleep and think about it. I want it on your heart and your mind all the time, the presence of God, loving Jesus. Do it because of love of Jesus. I just want to love you, Jesus. I want to be with you. I want to hear what you have to say. There's a hunger and a thirst in going after God and His righteousness. I pray that's provoked and stirred in you. The gift is surrendered and yielded to Him. And that you lay down your life before Him and consecrate yourself to Him just in desperation. Because God's about to move mightily. And you can start right now. God can begin to use you right now. You can have your personal revival with Him right now, right where you're at. Receive the Holy Spirit. Let Him fall on you with power. And let Him have full access. Oh, I'm praying right now that you're being stirred. I'm praying that you're being provoked. And as I call on the Lord God in the name of Jesus, we just want your presence, God. We want more of you, Father God. We consecrate ourselves wholly unto you. We give the gift unto you, Father. Jesus, come manifest yourself in us and through us, Father God. Let your word bear fruit in us and increase in us and then bear fruit through us, Father God. Oh, Father, give us a great hunger for you and your presence and the word. Open our eyes. Let the word become a fire in our bones, Father. Let it be bigger in us. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, right now. We just love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We want more of you, Jesus. Father, we surrender to you in this, the day of your power. Use us, Father God. Send us. And Father, we cry out for the harvest. Souls for Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that you watch over your word to perform it. Your word will not return to you void. And I thank you, Father, for that in Jesus' name. Well, be blessed, be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Amen.